Hello, everyone. Welcome to my 1CC commentary and guide on how to get your own 1CC of one of my favorite shmups of all time, Guwange or Guwange or Guwange, however the hell you say this game's name. I'm currently playing this on the recently released Mr. Port made by the same guy who did the Dodonpachi port, no object. So shout outs to him for doing such a great job. I've played the game quite a bit on MAME and on Shmup Arch, and I've even played quite a bit of the Xbox 360 version. And I do think the Mr. version feels really solid. I wasn't seeing any issues popping out to me other than one obvious sprite issue that is too obvious for anyone to miss, even if you've never played the game before. Outside of that one very limited issue, though, I wasn't really picking up on any problems with the port, and I think it's going to be a great option for people who maybe don't like to mess around with software emulation on their computers, but aren't wanting the janky Xbox 360 port. They're wanting a more accessible experience. I think this Mr. Port is another step forward in getting this game out there to a whole new audience and it's bringing attention to this game that it normally does not get because it is criminally looked over, even in the world of shmups, poor Guange. Wenge, however the hell you say it. I always forget its name every commentary. Uh, this poor game gets looked over way too much. So in this guide, I'm going to give you some overview on how the game works, because even if you're familiar with, with shmups, you're familiar with bullet hell, you've played Ketsu, you've played Donanpachi, you've played Toho, you know it all in your mind. Prepare yourselves, because Wenge is its own unique experience and something that I would love to see in many ways followed up in the future. I don't think Cave's gonna make a follow up, but to any indie devs out there who are interested in making a really awesome style shmup, I think this game laid out a lot of really cool ideas that I would like to see explored more. So let's go over the main focus of the game as far as getting into it, what you need to understand. The first thing you need to understand about this game that's gonna save you a lot of trouble is the way the scrolling and the way the layering of the game works. So unlike almost every other shmup you've played, your ass is not in a ship in the air. You don't have wings. You're not a fairy or whatever the characters in Toho are. You're not flying in the air. Instead, you are a feudal soldier with your feet on the ground. You are walking around. You are fighting enemies on the earth. I don't know how else to say it. Yes, you're walking around. And that actually has a lot of significance. It's not just a visual motif. It's not just, oh, that looks cool visually. It has significance. The first significance is, unlike most shmups, you have to deal with the terrain. As you can see right now, I am walking across a bridge. In most shmups, you don't fly through bridges. Sometimes in like Musha, there's canyons you have to squeeze through. But for the most part in shmups, you're not worrying about that except in horizontals. But in verticals, that's very unique. So the cool thing about Guange though, is it's not just the normal sort of thing, even with horizontal shmups where you need to go around up and down and work your way around objects and if you hit the walls they kill you, because you're on the ground, running into a wall won't kill you. That makes literally no sense, right? So the walls are not uh, to be feared as obstacles. Instead, you can use them like you're playing a third person shooter or an FPS, more like a third person shooter. You can use them as cover. You can use them, as you can see here, on the right side some of those bullets were not making it through because there's a wall there. So your enemies and your own fire can uh, hit terrain and uh, there can be some cover options going on. That will come into play a little bit later, but keep that in mind. Another thing about this, the scrolling of this game, since it's not just flying through the air, is if you're paying attention to the level, it's not just directly forward. You get all sorts of variations in the scroll. You can be going forward. And then the screen can start scrolling sideways to the right. And then you're going diagonally up to the left. And then you're scrolling. I don't know if there's a backward scroll. I don't think so. But you're going in all directions with the scroll, even though the, uh, what would you call it? The aspect ratio is vertical. It is definitely a vertical shmup. But the way it works is not 100% vertical because you can literally be scrolling sideways even as you're facing forward. That comes into play for two reasons. One. Uh, it comes into play with how you position yourself in what's in front of you. But the bigger part of it is knowing the way the screen scrolls helps you position yourself for future things that are going to happen in the game where you realize, oh, as the screen scrolls, this bit of background here will get in the way or this formation will appear there. So not only do you need to memorize the, mem the enemy locations and their bullet patterns like in motion maps, you should try to strive to remember 
where the screen scrolls occur and how those transitions affect the way the bullets interact and the enemies interact. So that's the first thing to understand about the game is scrolling direction matters a lot, a lot. The second thing to understand about the game, like I talked about before, is the attack system where because not everything is in the air, you'll have obstacles on the ground that will prevent enemy shots from getting to you, but also from your own shots getting to the enemy. Well, how does Guange get around this? With the ghost system. I think it's called the Shiki system. I can't speak Japanese. I'll call it ghost. The ghost system, as you can see right now, if you hold down concentrated shot, rather than getting your typical Dodonpachi style laser, you get your ghost. And a lot of the technique and skill of Guange is not just the fundamental ability to dodge bullets like in most bullet hells, it's also to manage this ghost and to make it do what you want it to do and also how to manage your movement as you're deploying your ghost. Because the thing about it is, it's like a rail shooter in a way, where in a rail shooter like Star Fox, if you want to aim upward, you gotta move your ass upward, right? Well, in this game, it's kind of uh, horizontally. So if you want to aim your ghost to the right, you're gonna move slightly to the right. If you wanna aim your ghost to the left, you need to move slightly to the left. Your movement speed is reduced, and so you can do these nice swinging motions with your ghost, so you're not totally moving around, but it's still moving you, and there's gonna become, especially in the later stages, some real tricky sections where you not only need to be able to know where things are coming from and what to do, but you also need to know how to move while moving your ghost. You're moving two characters at once, your ghost with a fast movement speed and your main character with a slow movement speed, and navigating that difference in acceleration between the two is a very essential skill of Guange, and I think really separates someone who's experienced in the game versus someone who's just picking it up for the first time. Another thing to take note of, of the ghost mechanic, is that it has this sort of blast radius that's on the actual ghost itself. So you see those things flying from your character to the end of the ghost. Those things don't really do damage, or if they do damage, it's not, it doesn't seem to be a whole lot. Instead, it's the ghost itself. You need to park it on top of its target, if that makes sense. Like, you need to place it specifically and strategically, and it has this big damage blast radius around it. And not only does the blast radius do damage to enemies and bosses and whatnot, Oh, let me pause what I'm saying here real quick to discuss this boss. This is the infamous cat spider. I would be thrown in prison if I did not discuss this boss at least a little bit before I talk about the overall system again. So when you first play Guange and you're just playing it for survival, I think there's nothing wrong with this boss at all. It is a lot of fun. Uh, actually, one of my favorite bosses to fight, just survival wise, but this boss is notorious if you play this game for score. And the reason for that is because it has this massive long milk pattern that you need to milk over and over to build up your chain. And I'll talk about the scoring system in a little bit, but basically what it comes down to is your chaining system, unlike Doranpachi, is not just limited to the sections of the levels. You can chain into the bosses and you can actually chain the bosses. But what's also even crazier than that is that you carry your chain throughout the entire game. So you're not only chaining a boss, but that chain carries into the next stage. So a really good uh, Guange score player is essentially chaining the entire game together. That's how you get the counter stop. However, uh, there are some exploits to the system. One of them being this uh, spider boss milk. So I, you don't see the pattern anymore because I just killed the pattern because I'm just doing this survival. But if I was playing for score, there's this sort of knife pattern and you need to just milk that pattern for like five minutes or something like that last time. I, it's somewhere in that ballpark, about five minutes. And it gets harder and harder the longer you milk it. So essentially the way it works is if you're playing this game for score, this spider boss, this cat spider is like the massive scoring roadblock. You need to constantly grind out runs and most of your playtime is probably going to be grinding out runs and trying to get a strong cat spider milk because it's make or break when it comes to the higher level scoring. But all that being aside, if you're just playing for survival, just kill the cat spider, you don't need to worry about it. But getting back to what I was saying about the ghost, so some important mechanics to keep in mind with the ghost is not only does it deal damage to enemies, but as you'll see here, it stops or slows down enemy bullets that are in that sort of blast radius of the ghost. This is another huge tactical aspect of the game that is awesome. 
It is really cool and what really separates it from a lot of other shmups out there, cave or otherwise. So the way it works is if you stick your ghost into an enemy bullet pattern, almost all the bullets, I think there might be some bullets that are more immune to it, but pretty much all the bullets, I'm pretty sure, um, it will slow them down. And the second you move your ghost off of them, they'll speed right back up. And so what's interesting is based off different attacks and different uh, parts of the game. Oh, important survival strategy here. So here's you saw the, the sprite issue there, but important survival strategy is this guy, if you don't kill him with a bomb, you get a health recharge, which is really important. But what's funny is if you're uh, in trouble, I didn't do it in this run because I was playing extremely well and I didn't need to do this trick. But a trick you can do is if you're really low on health and you don't think you can dodge his pattern, what you can do is you can activate the bomb and sort of hit him with it, but not kill him with it. So you hit him with it and then you move to the side, let the bomb uh, go for the rest of the way out, and then uh, resume attacking him with your ghost and you will still get that health refill. So that's a dirty little trick you can pull to basically make it so you can bomb the boss, bomb the worm without actually bombing him completely and killing him, but you still get the health recharge. But if you kill him with the bomb, no health recharge. So there's a little survival tactic. But let me get back to explaining how this ghost system works. So with the ghost, uh, it slows down the enemy bullets. And if you kill an enemy with the enemy bullets being slowed down, it'll cancel them. That is huge. This is how you play the game well, even for survival. So you'll see in that whole section there, just uh, previously, if you rewind back, I'll do some uh, back in time commentary here there's tons of enemy formations there and there's actually a lot of bullets on screen that would be very hard to dodge without using this exploit but we, or without using this technique not exploit so what you do is you stick the ghost sort of on the enemies and as they're spewing bullets and you just hold it on there just diamond hands hold the ghost on top of them because when you kill them with the ghost it will also cancel those bullets they're spawning so that's a really strong way to manage bullet spam in the game without having to you know dodge it necessarily you can suppress it using the ghost and cancels with kills it's also a real technique you use when you're practicing chaining and you hold different bullets to extend your chain and then cancel them and all that but we're talking more survival but here's the funny thing about this so now i'm going to give you some advanced ghost techniques that are specifically for bosses because the way it works is and this is something you're not going to pick up on. I didn't pick up on this in any sort of guide or anything. I just figured this out on my own. And once I figured it out from watching replays, I realized this is a really important aspect of the game that you will not pick up on when you first play. Here is what it is. And it's a ghost mechanic. When you're using your ghost in the stages, the ghost will auto reel back to you after you release it. So let's say you have it on the right side of the screen, you need to release it, it will auto reel back to you. And then if you want to employ it on the left side of the screen, you need to launch it back out from you. During boss fights, this mechanic changes. During the boss fight and only during boss fights, your ghost does not auto reel back. It just hangs out where you left off. That is crucial because in a lot of boss fights, not only for chaining them, but for surviving them, what you want to do is you want to park your ghost and then when things get dicey, you just let go of your ghost and dodge. But the ghost won't auto reel back. So you can Im immediately pick up right where your ghost was before. It was just hanging out right where it was. And this can lead to some uh, tricky techniques that I like to use for bosses. For example, in a lot of boss patterns here in the final stages, what will happen is if you try to use your ghost all the way through the pattern, you'll actually end up killing yourself essentially because what will happen is you'll hold a bunch of bullets but the wall of bullets will become overwhelming for your ghost and then when they get past your ghost you have just this line of death coming at you that you can't dodge so what you want to do is i used it in the last boss fight and it also will be used a ton in the later boss fights is you want to stick your ghost right at the top of the screen all the way up at the top above the boss basically and then you need to feather your activation of your concentrated shot. So you hold rapid shot and then you go uh, concentrated, concentrated, concentrated with this rhythm. And if you do it at the right rhythm, it's basically what it is, is it's just enough for the ghost to damage, but and then also just enough for you to move without moving the ghost. 
this is the technique, the main boss fighting technique to be able to maneuver around the screen while also placing your ghost where it needs to go. You can't do it in the stages, but you can do it during the boss fight. So you place it and then you feather on and off, on and off of your concentrated shot and you'll get these little movements that your ghost won't move, but your character will move. And that's how you're able to move around during boss fights while still applying pressure with the ghost and having it at the top of the screen or wherever it needs to be. Uh, you'll see that appear in the later fights. As we get further and further in the game of Guangay, what I think gets tricky is that the game really starts to test you on your ghost placement and understanding uh, your routing in terms of that. For example, these later stages here will start to punish you if you're not coming on and off your ghost enough, right? Or unless you're not placing it just right. For example, in this boss fight, I don't usually use the ghost too much on this fight because in doing so, well, this first phase here is absolute bullshit, by the way, uh, especially in special blue, blue version. So there's two versions of Guangge, regular and special. Special, I think is, it's kind of funny. Special is easier for scoring, but harder for survival because of the way the chaining systems work. But as far as getting the 1cc, I think special mode is, the special blue version is actually harder. But a, a, just because the bullets are basically faster. <laughs> There's a little bit of extra bullet patterns, but mostly they're just faster during the boss fights. That's the main sort of difference. But anyway, uh, that main first phase there, I would say just bomb it. And then the second phase here, you'll watch. I don't really use my ghost too much because it'll end up clogging up these patterns and causing you hell. Now, if you want to play for score, you have to use your ghost because you have to chain the boss as you maneuver your ghost. But if you're not wanting to do that and you're just wanting to survive, I would recommend not using your ghost too much other than placing them at the top of the screen and doing that feather technique that I mentioned because it has one other really, really good side effect, which is it creates additional slowdown, especially in the later fights. Uh, on this fight as well, you'll see here I'm starting to use it. You see how I'm getting that little extra slowdown it's tricky because your movement is a little bit like stuttery because you go on and off, on and off, on and off. But once you master that sort of stutter step movement, uh, it's really useful, especially on the stupid baby, because you get these wicked patterns to be more manageable because you can sl you can induce slowdown by doing this. Uh, so now we go to the final stage. And uh, so I'll speak specifically on how to clear the stage because what's ironic about this commentary and about this game is I think you can mostly figure out all of the stages on your own as far as technique wise because you see a massive difficulty spike massive in this stage and nailing this stage is make or break for a really funny reason that's because this stage contains a section that fully recharges your resources so you could be playing like absolute dog shit you could get to this stage with a sliver of health and no bombs and if you master this recharge technique you'll be right back in the game as if you're playing, well, almost, almost as if you're playing perfectly. It's basically like starting a new credit for the most part. So here we go, here's the master technique. It starts here, you wanna get up here, and then you wanna move your ass right up into this corner as far up against the bank as you can. And then once you're up there, that's because it's safe from the little zombie guys. And then once you're up there, what you wanna do is you wanna attack the spiders with your ghost here and you want to keep a really close eye out because you're going to get these health recharges and then there's the master health recharge and you don't want to collect that right away. And there it is. There's the master health recharge. You see it floating. I've actually watched replays. This thing will float almost through the entire stage pretty much. So there's no hurry to pick it up because that bad boy will just float there for, for as long as you need it basically. Uh, but you don't want to collect it too early. And the reason why you don't want to collect it too early is there's some tricky exploits you can do. Like, for example, if you want to fully recharge your bombs and you have a life bar, you can die, and it's a health system like Death Smiles, essentially. You can die, you recharge your bombs, and then you pick up the full recharge and you can fully recharge your health. That's a technique you can do to recharge not only your health, but your bombs. And also, you kind of want to wait a little bit before picking it up because there's other health pickups that you can exploit, and that section can be really, really tricky. The game is obviously punishing you. This bit here, uh, the the watch this replay again because learning how to manage that boat section is gonna really pay off. Uh, this part always got me. Then I realized this is a part where knowing the scroll really matters because instead of hanging out in the back of the screen, which you'll be tempted to do, 
just move forward and fight the whale uh, as the screen moves forward, rather than trying to fight it from the back of the screen because you'll, the, you'll essentially get pinched. Here's another really tricky section. Uh, the wagons, is, I guess is what they are. Uh, there's a little safe spot here that I recommend doing. What I recommend doing, because these wagons will basically kill you. Um, they're very hard to dodge, even if you know their formation. The safest way to deal with them is to have your bomb uh, dodge the first two or three wagons and then get up to sort of one third of the screen from the bottom and just bomb and just sit there. And if you sit there while bombing and you'll end in kind of a safer area, that's a way to get, deal with those wagons without taking too much damage. Now here we go, the final rush, and this part is tricky. What's funny is this replay, I played like a god, at least by my standards, all the way up to this point, and then this point I played like absolute shit because I was playing so well I got kind of cocky. Uh, the way this works is when you kill these, you're, you're basically what you want to do is you want to utilize all of this screen because they're going to be spawning from all directions. And the key here is when you kill them, they spawn suicide bullets that are aimed at you. And so you want to sort of kill them and then move up and around, move up and around. And you want to maneuver into areas that don't have enemies. And just use your regular rapid shot. Don't try and use your ghost. And what's funny is there's this sort of last wave there. That while last wave, you just move upward, upward, and just hug the top of the screen, and you'll be safe from them. Here we go. This boss, this boss is way harder in special version than in regular version because of the suicide bullets of its options. So here's the way it works. On the left side of the screen is a bush with an item, and on the right side of the screen is a bush with an item. You want to kill them because you want the items. One's a bomb and one's a full bar recharge. You want them both. Uh, so the way it works is what you normally want to do, it spawns these options up front. You want to blow one side of them away and then you want to release your ghost and then move up and around the other side. And you can kind of do it, you'll see me do it in these formations here. Uh, you can do that over and over and over and you, it's not too bad of uh, a pattern once you understand that. This pattern on regular version is much easier than on special version. So I just bomb it on special version. Regular version, what you can actually do is you can actually just use rapid shot and you can go up and around, up and around. The options will seek you. But in special version, they shoot these massive suicide bullet waves. So you can't really do that. So I haven't really found a good special version tactic on them other than bombing them. Okay, so here's what I was talking about earlier. So I got my ghost up at the top of the screen and I am feathering that concentrated fire. It's fat, like... It's not fast as you can, it's at the, it's like a rhythm game, it's at the perfect rhythm as you can. It's a pretty fast rhythm, but it's not too fast. You just do the perfect rhythm, and if you get the rhythm just right, your character will move around, your ghost will do damage, but you won't move your ghost. And you'll also create extra slow. So it's just a very good technique all around. Pretty essential for the baby, I would say. So this pattern here, me dodge, this is the make or break fight right here. If I do well on the baby, I can get to clear. If I don't do well on the baby, it's game over because the final boss is too hard without resources. So what's funny about the baby is you can bomb and resource spam the baby, but in doing that, you basically have sealed your fate because you need those resources for the actual end boss. So in a way, I've always sort of viewed the baby fight as almost like the true, more, more like the true last boss than the final boss because you need to basically really manage your resources on the baby and he's got some real tough patterns here uh this pattern absolutely blows i just bomb it okay i was going to talk about how to deal with the pattern which is you do that feathering technique but then you also have to release and move up slightly as you do it because the the, the walls of the flame will come up at you okay here we go uh final boss now phase one i use rapid shot what's key here is stay back of the screen and don't move around too much. This is one of those death trap patterns where actually the more you move around, the more wild the pattern becomes. So you want to just sort of, uh, if you can, stick to the back of the screen and just move left and right very carefully as much as you need to, but not too much. That way you keep the pattern tame. And then once that pattern ends, like I did there, you do the strategic bomb because the next pattern is absolutely from hell. So you want to bomb through that pattern. And then here we go with the knife pattern again not using my ghost, just using rapid shot, and you want to just move up and around, up and around. The more aggressively you move forward in the knife pattern, it seems like the better. Okay, that was a really good phase one. Uh, didn't take 
damage or anything, I don't think. And now we go into... It's key to go into the final attack. The final attack is incredibly hard, both in a special version and in regular version. And I can't quite tell which version is harder than the other. They're sort of equally hard in different ways, I think. But the way it works is... I didn't talk about this mechanic before, but if you are in ghost mode, you actually are dealt less damage than you are if you're unfocused. So usually if something's about to hit you and you don't have a bomb, go ghost mode because at least it'll do less damage. And the way that is really exemplified in that final pattern there, I'll talk about the final pattern a little more, is what you want to do is you want to place your ghost right on top of him, obviously. And then for the most part, you are just trying to dodge horizontally on those knives. Problem is though, is that those big, yellow balls are really fast and they move in these erratic directions and it's random. You don't know what they're going to do. And so you need to sort of try your best to not only dodge those horizontally, but then when they spawn those enemy knives, don't get rattled because you're going to get hit with those knives. But the knives only do, I think, one eighth of a bar of damage somewhere in there as long as you're holding ghosts. So don't panic. So what you want to do, you just try and maneuver around those knives and you try not to let them line up on you too much. You, you'll probably get clipped by a few of them. And it's kind of like a really nasty final boss because you can't bomb it necessarily because it has a bomb shield. But I would recommend if you have some bombs and those yellow balls are flying at you and you know they're about to hit you, bomb defensively just not to get hit by the yellow ball. But that's all you can really do. And if you time the bombs during certain parts of the final attack, like uh, sort of like in the middle of one of the ball attacks, you can have sometimes if you line it up just right, you can have the bomb end between phases of his shot. And so even though you're not actually damaging it, you can actually line yourself up with a little bit of uh, a free shot or two on him because you're lining it up to uh, do damage. But Anyway, that is my commentary and 1cc overview of Guange. I didn't talk about routing as specifically as I was hoping. I think that's just because Guange is such a complicated game mechanics-wise that took up almost the entire commentary. But if you have any questions, if you're having any issues with the game, definitely feel free to drop it in the comments and I'll try and answer. Study my route. That's a very strong survival route. Uh, there's three different characters. I didn't talk about this earlier, but uh, my favorite character is Bow Girl. She's probably trickier to use than the glasses guy. So the guy all the way on the right glasses guy, he's probably the easiest guy to get the 1cc with. Bow Girl is trickier because her movement speed is really fast, but I like that, so that's why I use her. And then uh, the mask guy, kind of the coolest looking character and sort of the most iconic character, he's funky as hell because even though he's got pretty solid stats, his attack kind of whips. And that can actually be an extra challenge to manage. So his regular shot has this whip to it. So you have to learn not only to manage the ghost and to manage his movement, but you also need to know how to manage his whip attack as well. So I would say he's the trickiest character to use in the end. At least that's my experience. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, please like, subscribe, tell all your friends. Check out the Patreon. I really appreciate any Patreon support you'd be able to give. And thanks so much. Adios, everyone. So thank you to the $5 patrons, 100, 100, Dingo, Another Joe, Anthony A, Anthony Iodice, Aaron Solis, Bo, Ben, Borgi22, Brian Shiver, Chris Yusufovich, Chronic Burnout 3, Climby Coyote, Cook Some Soup, Corey Mark, Des Audio, Darkwing, Darren Griffin, Delta Tango 6, Disco Stas Leia, DJ420, Praise It, Eric H, FCK, Full Set, Retro Shmupper, Haosu, Kiwi, JLab, JB, RPG, Jim Nockham, John Kelly, Jolt, Game Boy Guru, K, K2, Khalil Reedy, Geekoman589, Larage, Malays, Mark Toms, Matter Oso, Matthew Derrick, Maz, Megadeth 859, Minong, Mechelin, Michael Stum, Mitchell Y, Queen Charlene, Nathaniel Davis, and Electron, Neon Dagger Games, Oakla Kugels, Rattlecat, Raul, Real Skeen, Riff Mason, Rolf 015, Sarah, Scanline City, Seesaw FW, Seven Overdose, Shmup Junkie, Space Photos, Stadium Arts, Steve Fiction, The Boot Rex, The Real Ikuzo, The Dirty Screech, The N1, The Old Bensta, TRM, Sugumo, Plasmo, Twilight EX, Unico E Roots, Wabby Legs, and Utakaya. Thanks for watching.